three, two, one. Welcome to Dev Thoughts with David West, or Dev or DT with DW. How about that? I don't know. Try it's a, it's a tenant. It's a working title. But this is the first episode we've ever done, and tonight we're actually going to be talking about. Let me bring up my slides so I can follow along. What we're going to be talking about tonight, something that's been on my mind a lot since MVP Summit, since before, I've talked about it on Twitter a bit here and there, and I'm getting more involved, and that's Epic Games. As you know, when I'm making Vagabond on stream, it's in Unity. I started with Unity, I've been sticking with that because it was the easiest for me to pick up and kind of run with. I was intimidated by C++, I was intimidated by the 3D nature of Unreal Engine, because that's what Epic brings bring to the table. But uh, in the last few months, they announced Epic Online Services, or EOS. Okay, and this is really interesting because I know that my game needs to include analytics and, and Unity provides them. PlayFab is the one I would actually pick. Um, um, it's from Microsoft. They were purchased by Microsoft, by Microsoft Azure. So PlayFab is where I was going. It's now called uh, Azure, Play, uh, Play, Azure PlayFab, I believe. They provide all the things I want, specifically game analytics and a couple bells and whistles around, around analyzing my player data and then things like pushing out updates or pushing out content and things like that. The big one that I've been focused heavily on is game analytics. It's the only one I care about because I want to see how people are playing my game early on so that I can understand what's happening and, and what I can do with it. And Epic is providing that as well. So at the GDC state uh, at the GDC at GDC 2019 or the Game Developers Conference 2019, they announced uh, they did the state of Unreal. And Tim Sweeney got up on stage and introduced a bunch of stuff on Ma Epic Mega Grants. Let's mute my phone. And Chris Dill, director of platform, who you see on screen there, he came up and started chatting about um, Epic Online Services, which is this new new thing. And the thing that kind of caught me off guard was their initial offering it was pretty cool. It comes with game analytics and a ticketing system. So that's the first two things. It's brand, brand new, right? Three months old so far. These are the services that they use to build Fortnite. So they're starting with providing us with game analytics and a ticketing system for support. And it's cross-platform. So any engine, any platform. So if I want to integrate this into Unity, I can. If I want to use Epic uh, or Unreal Engine, I can. If I want to use some weirdo proprietary engine, I can. No, no issues. But here's the thing that kind of caught me off guard. They say it's totally free. And I don't believe this. Not for a second. I'm just going to grab my water here. I'm parched. I didn't believe this for a second. Not even a little bit. So then I went off and tweeted them and said, Hey, Unreal, are the Unreal services provided today, ep uh, which is actually Epic services, but ticketing and analytics going to stay free moving forward? Because the ticketing system is something unique that they provide. And analytics is something that I know I need. I want this and I need this. Is it going to stay free moving forward? Because the hook I'm figuring is, you know, oh yeah, they're going to get me hooked on it for free while it's new, and then they're going to start charging me a hundred bucks a player or something ridiculous. And they replied, as you can see down here, yes, it's just going to stay free moving forward. And I focused, you can notice my question, I focused heavily on the, the initial offering. I wanted, all I cared about was, is ticketing and analytics going to stay free? Because for someone who's new into the business, who's an indie, who's just trying to get themselves moving, not too worried about it, this is a huge deal for me because I can integrate this and start using this service right away. And I don't have any strings attached, nothing like that. And they focused on that, on the state of Unreal, and I just didn't believe it. But I started to think about it a little bit further, and I think this is where it kind of comes together. Their future offering, which is uh, authentication and login for your players, uh, which provides a friend list. You can provide voice chat. Uh, PC Mac overlay, so you can have that little overlay that kind of shows a friend list and kind of an, a bit of an integrated experience. Achievements and trophies, parties and matchmaking. These are all things that they want to be offering in the future, in the short future. There's also player thing, like player data and, and things like that. But here's the big one too. It's also cross-platform. So Facebook, Google, Xbox Live, PSN, Nintendo accounts, the Epic Store. I'll talk about that in a second there, Stilterfish. I'm just going to keep going with this for a sec. Uh, in addition to Epic accounts and supports Twitch account linking. And so it's fully cross-platform and apparently it does work on whatever store you want to use. So there's no hook on this so far. But I want to know what the catch was. Like, why is this thing free for me to get into it? Like, why? why? And I think the catch is that it's a new service. It's a baby. Unreal is trying to disrupt the market, more specifically with between the Epic Store, right? As Stilterfish pointed out on chat, 
and with um, uh, this their engine. Their, their, the engine's always been there. It's been very powerful, but they're really they're taking this huge amount of money they've gotten through uh, investment from Tencent and and and, the, and Fortnite. They're taking that money and they're trying to invest and disrupt the market. They're trying to dethrone un, uh, Unity as the de facto starter engine, and they're also trying to disrupt Steam as the ubiquitous platform holder. So they're doing things like exclusives. That's a whole other video for another time. But the catch is that this is a brand new service. It doesn't offer everything you want it to offer. And it's, it's like I say, it's a new baby. So you got to kind of deal with that fragility up front. So there's that piece of it. I think the second thing is, is that there's the theory that it could just all be smoke and vapor. They could just be blowing smoke saying, we're going to do this. It's going to be free forever and blah, blah, blah. And it's not. They could always change it. There's nothing. There's no one. No one's going to hold them against them, right? You know, their shareholders change their mind. It is what it is. But... I don't think they are. Epic, you look at how they do things, they put, they're very transparent about the features they seem to be pushing out, they're very forward thinking, they're very, here's where the, the roadmap is, they're doing that with the Epic Store now, they said that they added that Trello board, and you can see there's a lot of features missing compared to Steam, but it's, it's coming down the pipe. You also have the, uh, uh, they already do that with the Unreal Engine itself, so that's pretty cool, so they have that piece of it too, so I don't think it, it it's really going away i just think they're or they're lying i just really think they're trying to disrupt the market and the best way to do that is to give people free stuff uh to get to make them better and then that's going to make them look at the platform very similar to what i'm doing right now so what are my conclusions on this my conclusions are pretty straightforward honestly like i have been hemming and hawing about moving vagabond over to the unreal engine for about a month and a bit now and seeing the state of the state of unreal keynote from GDC. I watched it this morning. I was pretty convinced that's where the, my next game will be. I'm not going to start converting my current thing, which is just a prototype, over to Unreal. There's no point. Um, but when I have my five minutes of gameplay, and I feel like the thing is fun, I am going to take a serious look at moving the whole thing into Unreal Engine, because I do. There's 3D elements that I would love to integrate. My original vision for this has a 2.5D kind of 3D perspective, so if I did it in Unreal, it does 3D really well. You know, looking at stuff like the, they just released that uh, action RPG sample pack that does blueprints and C++ to get the kind of your brain around the scripting. It's a, it's a strong development side of things, but I have to explore it a bit more, and the only way I'm going to be able to do that is by actually building something in it, but I'm not about to just abandon what I've already built just to move on to a new engine just for fun. So once I have my five minutes of gameplay, I'm going to revisit this. And ultimately, they did say they're going to include, for as for, in, with respect to, that I kind of got off tangent there, in conclusion with the Epic Online Services, I will be using those. They've already said they are going to be doing Unity integration along with Unreal Engine integration. The SDK they've provided is just a C API, so it's low level. You can integrate it with literally anything you want, and I'm sure there's a whole community of people that have already tried to do this on open source. They encourage people to do that. So I'll be using the Epic services rather than PlayFab, which is a big deal for me because I'm an Azure boy. As we all know that, I'm a Microsoft boy. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I love those services, and it's really made me take a serious look at Unreal Engine, and I think... You know, doing these tutorials that they provide on YouTube and stuff, it's its not as ubiquitous, but it is pretty clean compared to the mess that I'm kind of untangling with Unreal, uh, with Unity. And I'll talk about that as I get into the code today, because I did a bunch of animation work and that thing, that was horrendous, but we did that off stream. So those are my conclusions. So thank you for tuning in for the first segment of the... Uh, uh, what did I call it? Dev thoughts. There we go. So thanks for that. Let's go back to Hey friendos, thanks for watching the first ever episode of Dev Thoughts with David West. If you like this sort of thing, I do live streaming every Sunday night and Thursday night where I do game design, game development sort of things. If you like that sort of thing, come on by the stream at 9.30 Central. With that being said, if you could do me a favor, have yourself a pleasant day and or evening. That would be spectacular. Take care.